The St. Christopher Nevis Conservation Foundation is a perfect marriage between the public and private sector, where the members live and serve in the same space with the same goal in mind. The Council of the Foundation holds a constitutional majority of non-government mem members but this is no way silence the voices that carry a torch for environmental conservation and blaze it meeting after meetings. The chair has been with the SNCF since its establishment in 2016, July to be exact. Since she brings it to the table a wealth of corporate experience in management, both at the local and regional level, she was elected as chairperson of the foundation in 2019. Let us welcome Ms. Brenda John as she formally welcomes you, introduces you to your, our major donor and partner, and share with you the reason why you are here. It is my esteemed pleasure to welcome you, each of you, to this special launch event today. It is special for two reasons. It is the first public appearance of the SCNCF, and it marks the achievement of a significant milestone being the launch of its first grant-making cycle. In 2012, Caribbean governments at a meeting facilitated by the World Bank's Global Environmental Facility, GEF, expressed the need for a sustainable source of finance for the protection and development of nature-based assets. And in a gesture of commitment to the process, participating governments agreed to forego the routine allocation of GEF funds for one cycle and have that money placed in an endowment fund to be managed by a new entity formed for that purpose. The German Development Bank was equally convinced of the peril faced by the Caribbean and responded by helping to establish the new entity now known as the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund which celebrated its 10th anniversary this year. At that same meeting that gave birth to the endowment fund, countries committed to facilitating the establishment of national conservation trust funds, with its members selected from both government and non-government organizations, and with the non-government component being the majority. The Ministry of Sustainable Development led the charge and in 2016, the St. Christopher and Nevis Conservation Foundation with a leading NGO majority was formed in St. Kitts and Nevis. Its corporate members are the Ministries of Finance, Environment, Marine Resources and a revolving seat currently occupied by the Ministry of Tourism. Its non-corporate members were selected from business, trusts, hospitality, ecology-based organizations, and professional service entities. But the concept of a conservation trust fund where the members have to help create partnerships and attract funding, and where the expertise in, ec in ecological science predominantly exists in the government ranks, and where the government in this case was perceived as taking a back seat, and where the realities of small island life penetrated the livelihoods of some early members, nothing happened. Until 2019, when committed partners got together and reinvigorated the foundation. The reason I was smiling as I was reading that is that we have just recently brought on some new members on the board, and I was visioning them making a beeline for the door and running when they heard that they actually have to help work, right? Bilateral and multilateral organizations began to take notice. And in that same year, 2019, St. Kitts and Nevis received an award for the early achievement of the 20 by 20 goal, 20% 20 of its natural space protected by 2020. Also in 2020, the SCNCF met the eligibility criteria and signed its first partnership agreement with the Caribbean Biodiversity Fund officially opening the gateway for a channel of sustainable financing for the conservation, preservation, and expansion of terrestrial and marine biodiversity in St. Kitts and Nevis. Between now and 2030, St. Kitts and Nevis will benefit from over US $2 million investment in the natural environment. We were off to the races, and then along came COVID-19. Between 2020 and 2021, the SCNCF was able to complete a noise assessment that included interviews with just over 100 stakeholders from both government and non-government agencies. And of course, the majority were non-government. 
we learn three key things when it comes to finance and multi-stakeholder engagement Government believes that it is challenged the same way that non-government organizations feel that they are challenged, meaning neither has what they need. Government employees make no distinction between their right to live in a thriving environment and their eight to four job, meaning whatever needs to be done by them has to be done between that time, eight to four, Monday to Friday. And thankfully not everyone thinks that way or else we would be in trouble today. So as we do have some government representatives here today, we thank you for being here. Equally, if not more severe, the NGOs believe that the government is the one with responsibility to enhance and reinforce the natural environment for public good. And again, if we go down that road, we will still be in bales of trouble because it cannot be done by government alone. While many NGOs claim to have a commitment that includes environmental concerns, their knowledge of the needs and possibilities for engagement in a broader context remain largely unknown. Very few have av availed themselves of existing resources provided through other avenues because long-term projects are just not what they do. Yet, once apprised of the opportunities lost by lack of knowledge, most acquiesce. It is the opinion of the SCNCF that an opportunity to collaborate on a meaningful project with small interventions by everyone could create the impact we all so desperately need. For that reason, the SCNCF today launches its pilot initiative named, and I don't want you to run away when I say the name, it's Enhancement and Conservation of Local Carbon Sinks. This project invites government agencies, non-government organizations, and businesses to submit proposals that will advance the work of revitalization, expansion of use, and development of policies to manage the Central Forest Reserve in St. Kitts and Nevis. Central Forest Reserve in St. Kitts and the Nevis Peak, which I assume everyone knows is in Nevis. The possibilities for inclusion by all eligible stakeholders is expansive. The SCNCF has put in place a management system that allows entities that would otherwise not have qualified for grant funding because of their organizational structures or the lack thereof can apply under special guidelines. The success of this initiative will be demonstrated by number one, more stakeholders engaged in meaningful environmental conservation, Number two, enhancement of the Central Forest Reserve and Nevis Peak. And thirdly, development of policy guidelines. Friends, this is only the beginning. A better environment for all awaits us. We've been working a long time to get to this point, and we are very happy to be here and to see so many of you joining us on this Saturday. Um, Dr. Joya Clark, Minister of Sustainable Development, Environment, Climate Action, and Constituency Empowerment. I've worked with Dr. Clark for a number of years. When she was a student at UE, she did work with us on the Sustainable Conservation Plan for the, under the OPAL project, which was in 2007, if I remember correctly, Dr. Clark. And um, so I knew her before she got her doctorship. And um, we've worked through the years. She's joined the Department of Environment and done a number of exercises with us um, up to the day that she attained her role as Minister of Environment. I'm pleased because she did not come in green to the environment field. She had been doing work with us on a number of areas, especially on biodiversity conservation. So I want to invite Dr. Clark to give us some brief words today. Thank you. It's very encouraging, even on a Saturday, Master of Ceremonies, to, for government in particular to join non-governmental partners in sessions such as these, in, in particular for such a historic moment in St. Kitts and Nevis, the launch of the SCNC F Fund. We all recognize that environmental protection and conservation is actually 
the foundation for sustainability and for, for economic sustainability for St. Kitts and Nevis. And I say this to connect with my for foreign minister and senior minister, Dr. Douglas, who has already assumed his role and his responsibility for climate diplomacy and for investments in environment. Yes, let's give him a clap for that. And for the other ministers of government who are fully on board with using the environment and sustainability as the way forward for development in St. Kitts and Nevis. With that said, you have our commitment as a government to support this work and to fashion our next 20 years of development around preservation and conservation of the environment and, of course, climate resilience. Why would we do this? We recognize that, let's say, the nature-based tours, they're all based on going into Central Forest Reserve. We have so many people whose livelihoods are linked to the environment, terrestrial and marine. And if we recklessly use the environment and if we do not make intentional steps to protect the environment, would we have a tourism product in five years? No. So it's critical that we support initiatives such as this one. I have here, this morning before, while I was getting ready to come, I was listening to the news and there was this very long conversation on deep sea mining for precious metals, for batteries, for electric vehicles. And although we want to support the move to electric vehicles, we recognize that terrestrial mining of these precious metals can only provide so much, but if we want everybody to move away from fossil fuel-based vehicles, we're gonna have to push for the use of electric vehicles, but there's only so much. And what was heartening was the panelist, international panelist was cheered, I can't remember her name, but she's Caribbean-based, and there was a call by Google and Tesla and everybody saying they are not using precious metals mined in the ocean, in the deep ocean, because that's the last precious place on Earth. And if it means we're going to have to find new technology again, we're going to do this. And when you have international companies stepping out and saying we are not hurting the environment for investment or for another form of saving the environment, you have to say, Thank you, Jesus, the world is listening and recognizing that there is a need really to protect the environment. To bring that home, 1987, when we had NCPA, that bill, it was a very historic move to protect our environment. But it's now 2022, 2023, basically. And that bill has to be tabled next year. And I'm saying this because all of us here have to review that bill we have to send the comments. We have to do the stakeholder engagements. Because if we fail, if I fail, if you fail with the passage of the amendments for NCPA, which will then become NCMA, we're going to fail St. Kitts and Nevis. And we don't want that. We have to protect our environment. So let me just be clear. The National Conservation and Environmental Protection Act, NCPA, which was passed in 1987. So you could imagine that that's about 27. It's, it's not relevant. It's not relevant now. So there's a lot of work that needs to be done to ensure we have a new bill that reflects what happens in St. Gates and Nevis, what happens in the Central Forest Reserve, what happens on Nevis Peak, what happens in our oceans, what happens between St. Kitts and Nevis, right? Finally, I want to say that <clears throat> at every table, I have colleagues who I've worked with either at Keon High School, as Ms. Hughes said before, I was a minister when I was doing research as a PhD student and hegging everybody, please can I have some data, our Department of Agriculture, our constituency empowerment. And we all recognize, and importantly, the UNESCO MAV, I'm seeing so many faces here, we have such a critical role to play. So these remarks 
It's really a call to action. When we establish this fund today, when it's officially launched, there is a need to be very public, very social media oriented. This is St. Kitts and Nevis. Unfortunately, if it's not on social media, it's as if it didn't happen. It's so unfortunate, but it's the reality. We have to make a commitment to penetrating social media, which is already blocked up with every negativity, and infuse this positive action to protect our environment. So that's what our call is. Make it real. Connect with the churches. Connect with the sports groups. Connect with the schools, because these are our young ambassadors who are going to be sitting in here in five to 10 years. So congratulations to SCNCF. You have the support of the government of St. Kitts and Nevis, my ministry of the Ministry of Economic Development and Investment, and we will do all that we can to ensure that this fund has its support, the dedication, and any action needed on behalf of the government. Thank you.